this recording looks like. So guys, welcome back to uh, Higurashi again. It's been a while. Go ahead and load this. I hope Satoka will be there when I woke up that morning. I hope this baffling world was just half awake dream of mine. Um, space bar? No. So when I woke, not a familiar feeling, but to the one that did man out, it felt nothing but disappointment. Oh, I was pressing the shift button, okay. My mind hates I recall the situation I've been put into, thanks to my own carelessness, I got lost in this strange world. And his power couldn't reach here, so it would be incredibly difficult to escape. It was like trying to climb up the spider stud to paradise. But the spider stud was still there, no matter how thin it was, its presence meant there was still a chance to discover what was blocking his power, and I didn't even know what it looked like. The only possible clue was saying it was the DD of him about what was probably in the village somewhere. I picked up the crystal ball when I snuck out of the ritual implement storehouse. The ball gave up a week and somehow a natural light. I pressed it to my forehead and I could sense that faint presence that only I as the witch could feel. I was sure whatever I needed to find I would get the same feeling from as this. But again, like the crystal ball, I probably have to hold it to my forehead to sense anything. The next thing with things would be as simple as wondering about how I felt something, but if it was related to any power. The crystal ball was, it was almost certainly in the storehouse. Unfortunately, the storehouse was a complete mess of everything from ancient torture devices to piles of old documents to mounds of trash I didn't even know how to use. The only place with any semblance of cleanliness was the space around the vessel and the altar. Finding anything, especially an object as small as this crystal ball, would be no simple matter. Here you gotta eat your breakfast and hurry on to school. I heard my mother's voice from the kitchen. The school in this world was the one I went to. If I had a good son to go somewhere I didn't belong, then I should be using to search the storehouse. But there was no proof my search would only take one or two days. I really hated to say it, but since I didn't even know what it looked like, maybe I needed to prepare myself to search for take years. I didn't go to school, she ever... Blah, 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 because I don't know. Con conscience? Maybe, I don't know. Would call the house to see if I was staying home that day. If that happened, it would cause trouble with both the school and my parents. I couldn't imagine how much time this search would take. My parents grew suspicious, things would get harder. Slow and steady wins the race, I guess. Although it was frustrating for weekdays, it would be better to pretend I was going to school like normal. I let out a languid sigh, got up, and decided to eat the breakfast. During meal time, my mother's family about how I was never allowed to go into the original storehouse, getting steadily made the food taste worse. My mother was always insistent and long-winded. I hated this part of her. The elders in the village laughed and said she couldn't help it since she did it for her own beloved daughter, but to me, she was just a nuisance. Tough love wasn't what I needed at the moment. The only thing I could be thankful for was maybe that I didn't have to make breakfast for myself. But I could do it on my own, so I almost would have rather what she left it to me. After I was done eating, I started getting ready for school, and my mother continued to nag me about making it on time. Uh, how aggravating. Maybe going to school isn't so bad I won't have to see my mother's face for half a day. I thank her for the food, clean my plate, and utensils in the sink, and let them meet me for school. Yeah, a lot of scenes, huh? I'm gonna check if, uh, just real quick, since I'm not recording this through Streamlabs, I can't really pause it. Just checking to see if my Amazon order. Oh, it is up for delivery. Okay, I didn't get no notification for it. Good, because I ordered, I just ordered me some drinks and snacks and shit. Because my car doesn't work right now, and I can't get to the store. And I am thirsty as fuck.
Ooh, okay, if anything was gonna betray my expectations, I mean, wait, I wish class would too. But even in this world, class wouldn't be exact same as as the world I knew. I thought I escaped that world, and now it was repeating. Thinking that way made me feel less, oh, even more listless. Normally, I distract myself by teasing Satoko, but her seat was far away from mine. She was probably so, so bored with class, she didn't know what to do with herself. Satoshi, earnestly studying in the next seat over, was constantly trying to get her to focus. Neon seemed to be budding into Raina's business, too, but they weren't floating around. It was a strange, though, pleasant sight. They were helping one another to learn. Actually, they weren't the only pleasant sight. Everyone in the class was like that. Felt like I was the only one left out. I didn't know whether my seat was in its own world because of the odd number of students or if I chose my seat on purpose in this world, but it felt like my seat was separated from the rest of the classroom. When lunchtime came, I felt even more alienated. My classmates formed groups of friends and took out their foods, but the club members who would always eat with me weren't here. Satoko was part of a circle, a circle of several friends, including her brother. There was no place for me to wedge myself into. None in how was I pronouncing it? Was I pronouncing it right now? I'm gonna say it right now. I know we're sitting face to face with AA. No room for me there either. And nobody asked me if I wanted to eat with them. And they had fun eating their own meals, so this seemed natural, like it was something that happened every day. For a short while, I waited for hoping for Satoko and Mion or Raina to invite me over. I'm gonna just say Raina every single time. I don't know, man. Changing the name was confusing me. I'm only adding one letter to it. After the clock's minute had moved, Five and then ten places, I realized I might even be left behind and eaten. They finally gave up and opened my bento box. Inside were the leftovers of last night's burned hamburger steak and white rice with nori seaweed that was melt sticky. Spinach dropped with gooey nori and their remains of kimpira with chocolate burdock root also burned. I guess I forgot about that. For some reason, my mother overcooked everything. Summer is dangerous if you don't let the heat in, was a favorite phrase of hers. She would cook steaks so they were rock hard. And even when she made fish, she turned half their insides into ash. I knew Satoko was better than that. At least she knew how to how hot to cook things. Uh, when I learned how to cook some handy and started to make things better than my mother, she must not have been happy. It takes a terrible too. No presentation either. If you know, I decided to have a bento contest and I only had this, I ended up in last place. But there was no club in this world, so I didn't have to worry about that. Satoko's happy laughter not being directed at me made me feel sad. Suddenly, I arrived in that. Did my feelings get through? So the couple first time seen glared at me. What are you staring at? If you have something to say, say it. I, I don't have anything to say. Stop it, Satoko. You just happened to look at each other, didn't you? It didn't just happen. She was staring at me this whole time. It was getting gross. Come on. Satoko and her friends began whispering amongst each other themselves while looking at me. I couldn't hear what they said, but I could easily imagine them enjoying themselves. I'm sorry, I won't stare at you. I hope not. You were making my cream croquettes taste worse. I didn't know my desk a little so that I couldn't see the tuck on the others. At first, I called this world Satoko cold, but I looked like I was mistaken. This world Satoko either didn't like me or outright hated me. And the other kids close by seemed to have formed a community around her with no place for me in it. So they all hated me too. The hard and nash like steak kisses of salt. Why did I have to feel this sad and lonely when I ate? In all other world, all the club members would be enjoying lunch together. So Tucker would be there. <laughs> and Leon, Kishi, everyone would be having fun and spending their break cheerfully and nosily. Now was when Raina came over and peered into my bento box. Be good chatting. You have steak and spinach for lunch today. That looks good. It was clear that Irina had come over to try and comfort my distress. For some reason, I was frustrated, so I didn't want to answer her. When I stayed seven, she held out an octopus shaped sausage in front of me. I'll trade your spinach for my octopus, okay? <laughs> Rina trying to be as nice as I ate lunch alone, hated by my classmates. I just couldn't accept it. Suddenly, I said I was going to wash my hands and left, and in the bathroom stall, I covered my face with toilet paper and cried. The tears soaked through the paper and crinkled it up, but I didn't care. 
which was fun. It was very fun to have friends in this world. I had plenty of friends in the one I needed to return to. Their team was the tough goals when they were a principal best friend and all the club members who would never leave me alone during lunch hour were waiting for me. Why would I be sad that some tough I didn't know was being mean to me and a world I didn't care about? Why would I be? But despite the life of coma, I couldn't stop crying for a while. I decided to steal my resolve and wait for school to end. And I ran back home, so I couldn't have to play and sneak into the original implement store house again. That was the only way I could get back to my original world. I had to try and do my best for that purpose alone. Okay, I looked into the mirror in the bathroom to see your face red and crying. If she saw me like this, things would probably get even more complicated. I washed my face and then spent the rest of lunch break quietly in the corner of the classroom. After school, I literally dashed out of the building. It would be a huge pain if I ended up caught in the rush of the other classmates and I headed out to go play. I think Satoshi called after me, but I ignored him. He was probably just trying to apologize for his sister about what happened during lunch. I didn't care about that. I didn't want to stay in this horrible world a second more than I needed to. I ran full speed back to the house, ignored my mother when she asked as usual for editing and homework and searched for a lantern. Then I told her I was going out to play and without waiting for a response, burst out of the house. Then I went around the shrine and looked for my father. Ah, I almost figured it out. I saw a note hanging on the assembly hall that said there was a shrine and association meeting. I could hear my father's voice amidst the lighthearted chatter. It was the same opportunity I had yesterday. Today I had to be careful and slid on the house inside. After making sure nobody was looking, I climbed up the tree I'd gotten the hang of yesterday. I had been scared of the night before, but I wasn't afraid any longer, probably because I cried my eyes out and resolved myself during lunch. What I really had to be afraid of was not hide from my parents or the cold hearted Satoko, and was not being able to return to my original world. I'm going to be hitting my leg real quick. The next scary thing will be losing contact with Kenny, I think. In the darkness of the storehouse, I took the crystal ball out of my pocket. Its weak glow seemed a little more energetic than yesterday. Maybe if she rested a little, her power would come back. Nevertheless, it was still weak. If I wasted it on fruitless conversation, the light might go out entirely. I firmly squashed down the desire to check and make sure I could still call her and turned on the lantern. It was time to go treasure hunting. Was there anything around, anything that only I could feel? Something that felt the same as this crystal ball somewhere. I closed my eyes and honed my senses in hope. But all I heard were the cries of the katakas. I hadn't expected anything else. It looked like this would be a tough nut to crack. Too optimistic. Phew. Searching the entire storehouse. How much time would that take? I didn't want to imagine it, but I had to do it or I couldn't go home. I do it systematically, start in the corner and go in order. Without knowing what it looked like, I start in the corner and go from there, not even letting water pass. And despite all that, I had no proof it was even in here. I felt it would be easier just to fight the Kano and the mountain dogs again. I don't think it's going to be. Oh shit, what the fuck? I don't know if that popped up or not, but my, I don't know if something opened up. Um, okay. Let me move my mouse a little bit over here. Yeah, I didn't mean to do that either. Let me move my mouse over here because I don't really have a table or anything. I'm doing this in my bed and it's just sliding and shit. 
Okay, I don't think it's gonna get any weaker. I can hear your voice about as loud as I could before, which means like always, I only get to you weekly. I guess there is no need for us to chat. No, I think chatting is exactly what you need to do right now, Rika. Maybe. Thanks. I'll talk now. I'm pretty sure I searched the storehouse as well as I could. But I have nothing. I searched for about a week, but I don't even know what the thing I'm looking for looks like. And even if I did find it, I might have to put it down again without realizing. Oh, wow. Well. Honestly, this is really hard. If only I knew what it looks like. Or had some proof of what was in the storehouse. Being locked in here for so long, it's making me go crazy. I understand. I know it's a very difficult search. I'm doing my best to, to see if I can at least find out what the fragment looks like. And did you find anything out? Because in your world, fragments are interpreted as feelings. When those feelings are even in something, they become fragments. I understand the logic, but it doesn't give me much of a hint. Oh, and for this, as for how to return a fragment to this world, I think it needs to lose its form in that world. What does that mean? Do I have to break it? Yes, and completely. If it's lost from the human world, you can send it to the world of the gods. Do you know about the law of cons about that, conservation of matter? It's impossible to destroy something completely. Well, that's why I'm saying you don't need to destroy its form. Understand, Rika? Even in ancient times, people used methods like this to send things to gods. Okay, it just... Oh, yeah. I see. All right. A way ancient sin should be to gods. A way to get rid of something in the human world. You tell me to burn it. Burn it to ash and send it to the sky. That's right. By burning something to the ashes, it loses its form, losing its meaning, and makes it in the human world. I see. So I need to burn whatever is housing the fragment. I pray it's easy to set on fire. If it was a boulder, I'd have to throw it into a blast furnace or something. Actually, we could affect it might not only be in an object as possible, it could be in a person too. I see because the fragments are feelings. They might not only reside in objects, but hang you, if it was a person, what would I do? You're not telling me to burn them to ash, I'm sure. The meaning of a human disappears the moment they lose their life. That would make sense. Corpses aren't people anymore, so if the fragment was right, residing in a person, oh. You have to kill him. I believe until now I'd be searching for an object, but maybe he doesn't have to be that. I'd have no problem burning an object, but if it wasn't an object but a person. I don't like this, this world. For some reason, only the bad ideas turn out to be true. I can only pray it doesn't turn out like this. If the only bad ideas turn out to be true, then I could take advantage of that and search there first. If it was a person, they'd be closely connected to your seal, so am I right? Yes, most likely. Is it possible to me? No, it is. If you were the fragment rejecting me, you wouldn't be able to talk to me right now. Which means, next is my father, head priest of the Ephrode Shrine, and my mother, carrier of the Ephrode Lineage. Lineage? Lineage? I don't know. If it was one of them, I could just kill them, right? Oh, man, come on. I don't talk so lightly about it. Ooh. My human morality refused the idea of killing my parents, but that was nothing in the world of crossing which you need to think about. For some one with a true world somewhere else, this was a false world, meaning it was the same as my a dream. Murdering someone in a dream is no different from doing it in an illusion or daydream. There was nothing to consider about committing the sin in this world. Hangy was making it sad. I was noisy, so I told her how I felt. Stop being such a hypocrite. Would you rather give up on returning to our original world? Oh. Yeah, I'll just start to cry again. You're a coward. You're going to force me to do dirty in my hands while it's never dirty in yours. Convenient, isn't it? We could blame it all on one person. Nobody else will be marked with sin. What, baby? I need this one back up. There you go. You need to back up. Okay, um, the perfect human sacrifice. Man, he did all that crime before I started streaming for something to eat, and I don't think he even touched it. Oh, my damn dog. I felt those words were a little harsh on you and me. For a short while, she reminded silent, not saying anything. But her breath made it sound like she wanted to say something, but was hesitating. I want to go back to the final world that Lena said this once. I wonder how much we're about to struggle in order to be happy. I didn't think there was a limit to that effort, but can't you change that? There's no limit to effort, but you have to talk to a lot of people to get their advice on whether the efforts are misplaced or not. 
that's why I was talking about with Hanyu, the only one who shared my current situation. And Hanyu said that the possessing the fragment of the person that had killed them. I would want to avoid that, of course, if there were any other way. But she said that was the only way that I wouldn't hesitate. That was all. I don't want to go back to. Yeah, me too. I'll be praying that the fragment isn't held by a person. Please do. I will too, and I apologize. It was too hard on you. All you can do is look for clues. Keep my spirits up so I don't get discouraged. I don't understand how annoying it must be to not be able to look for the key yourself. It isn't as hard as it is for you, Rika. The only thing I can do is at least be here to care for you so your heart doesn't tire out. Thanks. These idle tracks will feel the most enjoyable thing about this world. The second wake up my nightmare for a few minutes. Oh, well, I see. I sort of understand why she said checking could be important. And you was the only one I could talk to from my original world. If I lose contact with him, you maybe my very connection to that world will be weakened and my memories will blur. And that would simply give birth to a miserable, broken-hearted girl living in the delusion that this world wasn't the one she belonged in. Leave it to me. I swear we'll go back there together. You keep looking around for any clues you find. If there are any developments on my end, I'll contact you again. I understand. We could hold it together. Go for it. Yay, remember? Yay. I couldn't hear any you anymore. The crystal ball lies growing weaker than ever, but as long as it had the other world to glow, I could keep believing this wasn't the world I was supposed to live in. Before, I might have shed a tear or two by now, but all the tears I could cry had dried up. I gripped the crystal ball tightly, savoring the cheer Henny had given me. Do your best. Go for it. Yay. I moved over to a spot to pile of old documents. If I could interfere with Henny, it had to be related to the legends of Yoshiro Sama. So maybe I thought a clue could be written one of the documents in that pile. Maybe even if the thing I searched for wasn't in here, I could find a clue to it instead. I took a few documents from the pile and packed them into a knapsack I brought with me. I could read some, but I couldn't understand any of the others. I just didn't point with one of the any deceptive ones. I would have no way of knowing. <coughs> now, I'm so glad I found a bottle of Fiji water because I'm thirsty. You know, I mentioned earlier that I didn't have any binge drinks, and I remember I still had some Fiji water. <sighs> Okay, um, but I don't think it's talk about it right now, I think. Stock think. I pulled out the few documents I could read and decided to read them in the secret at school and in bed. And I went in and out of the storehouse, such as to my parents finding out increase. In that sense, this would lower that risk, which made it a little easier for me. Maybe my parents didn't understand their children best, they were the first ones to help them, but that was when they were normal, not a witch like me. Their third daughter started babble about not being from this world. They probably tired down and summoned a noisy ambulance. If I were a little more cunning, I could flatter my parents and put in the work to make this world a little more bearable. But the more I thought about this world not being the one I lived in, the more apathetic I felt towards interacting with those who were here. That was probably why it seemed like I was being more and more isolated in class. Of course, maybe you could say that was my own fault. That was the kind of world that was at the moment I arrived. I wouldn't dare blame anyone say this is my fault. Of course, not a single person could tell me the difference between Rika Friday and me anyway. <coughs> Who is me? The me that is a Rika Friday. Who is she? I came around to a quiet electronical beep. I looked at my watch and noticed it was already evening. Being in here made me lose track of time. The other day, I was out of your way past curfew and it's called for a long time. The alarm on my watch was to prevent that. Letting my relationship with my parents grow any worse and make everything else more troublesome. I should call it quits for today. With practice motions, I climbed the bundle of the chains and hit a theater X in the roof. <laughs> Damn, my throat is just dry. I mean, rape me. <sighs> okay, um, let's see. Let me how long I've been at it for. Okay, let me compare that to my past uploads. Okay, not quite, but almost. Um, when I returned to the main house surrounded by the cries of the Higurashi that I got completely tired of, there was a slightly packed case of beer near the front door and three bottles of wine. The beer case was probably for a drinking party at the Shrine's assembly hall or something. 
My father didn't drink beer because he liked it, so I knew he had to be it had to be for the assembly hall. They delivered it here before the party so he could chill it before and in the assembly hall refrigerator. And the wine probably belonged to my father. My father enjoyed Western spirits and wine most of all. And one at the same time was something I enjoyed as well. Before after my parents had died in nineteen eighty one, I'd gotten wine by bringing it from the main house, but my parents were alive as well, so I couldn't do that. I stared at the bottle longingly as I tried to open the door, receiving a clack of his lock in response. I took a key from my pocket, unlocked the door, went in and saw a note dressed to me right upon entering. And it was from my mother. The note said next to had some my courtesy of Kimi Yoshi House, and they got out to help with the memorial service. They'd be late coming back, so and so on and forth. Written as a postscript was a notice that the brewer would be bringing alcohol to take it inside the front door once I got back for them. I see that must have been referring to all of this. If the person who had come while I was here, I could have told them to put it inside, but I couldn't bear to see them outside like this, but put it here before I got back. And it would be a pain when my mother started rambling about me being inconsiderate later. I made a sour face, not caring who saw him, pulled the case of beer through the front door. Next, I stood before the wine bottle and solidified my thoughts. I uh, couldn't have there been a slip up with the order. It was a brewery in a small village. My father called to say he ordered one more bottle. They'd probably bring over another one without a second thought. So what would a metaphor when least disappeared? I always diluted it before drinking, so I'd be able to enjoy one bottle of wine for a pretty long time. Despite being in the interest, I bloodily looked around and grabbed a bottle, ran into my room, and then pushed it into the winter food on my closet that I wouldn't use for a while. Actually, my parents live here too, so I won't have my many chances to drink. I ran to the kitchen and grabbed a glass, ice, a cock screw, and a carton of orange juice, and then ran back to my room. Free? I put the gold screw on the wine bottle and was overwhelmed by the urge to wet my tongue with the nostalgic flavor as soon as I could. Oh, this dude's like a not free cock skin. Okay, um, I'll be back. <sighs> He's a jabber. <laughs> the beta skin, dude, okay. I'm sorry guys, my messenger is loud as fuck. People never want to talk to me any other time. But as soon as I'm streaming or doing a YouTube video, it's like everyone in the world wants to talk to me. Okay. How was I supposed to survive next world without enjoying a good wine? I poured some into the glass and was just listening to the orange juice splashing and just filling it up made my mouth water like a dog. If I diluted this much, it looked like orange, just orange juice from the outside. But it was a nostalgic flavor that belonged to my world. At one time, it had been the flavor of my tears of defeat shed for the unbreakable June of 1983. But now, even those tears of defeat felt sweet and tender. Those dead end worlds were very painful, but I was still surrounded by my kind friends. I had a leeway to choose a surrender to the Kano and continue lazily living in the infinite loop. But even that warmth was absent in this world. This made a week now since I came here. With no prospects of returning to my previous world, I had resolved myself to stay here for a long time, but. A weekend had already driven me to drink. I'm only fine. Those worlds have driven me to the same state, and I still managed to really do my best with a soaked in wine, right? And he did be released from this week of really quickly. Nobody in this world would understand that, even if I explained it. That meant I had no allies here. If I told someone, they think I'd gone crazy. But considering this world's really that was only natural. 
This world's record for day was a dour girl without a single friend, and one day she being hit by a ball in the schoolyard and started saying she didn't belong in this world. If that big doctor Yamamoto, Yamamoto heard this, he would probably make a big fuss about the impact that would cause brain damage. That would make the most sense that people live here. At the very least, he told Ayo Rodriguez where he was looking for the correct being for this world. Maybe it was more appropriate to say that one day I, someone different from this world, break a peer that took over Rika's body. Right. I am not Rika Friede. I don't know, this world's Rika Friede. What's this world's Rika Friede? A different being than me. I simply been an anchor protecting this earth, being the same as me, even when I was a different world until now. When I thought about that, leaving aside whether I've been living happily, I felt like I'd done for the back of this world to Rika for a day. Of course, it was too late to apologize now, and I couldn't give this body back to her. If I call myself Rika Friday, the girl who already existed would have vanished from this life. Which meant the only way to apologize was to not call myself Rika Friday. Well, that hadn't bothered me for a long time. I have long felt that my young self prepared for this, that is the reincarnation of Warrior Shield Sama, and my old self would awaken and shovel countless worlds that had different personalities. But if I thought they meant not personalities, but as different beings entirely, then I was no longer Rika Friday. I. Who am I? I started vacantly at this wine bottle. Did I like this brand? My father always loved to drink this wine. And as a result, I borrowed it in countless worlds of other drinking even now. Right now, I couldn't even be lazy without borrowing the power of alcohol, and this wine comforted me just a little. At this point, I couldn't go on living without this wine. So, in other words, I wasn't alive, but the wine was, which meant I wasn't really good for a day, and now it's the wine. <laughs> I stared at the western letters of the brand name written on the wine label, which I didn't know how to pronounce. And I thought to myself that this was the name of me. My name is Rick Gifford, I don't know that, but this Birkenstell, I don't know what that means. Maybe I'll ask my father. Mm, my neck called Birkenstell. Frederica Birkenstell, ah, uh, whatever what a silly name that is. <laughs> my thoughts begin to slur and muddle, just the shithole of the world. And that's the perfect time for me to call it quits for now. I don't want to be like the. I don't. Well, I don't really have any like in these old days to sit and do like two hour long visual novel videos. Maybe if I had a more comfortable setup, some back support and neck support, I'm hunched over like a nerd neck. Um, but that's not the case, unfortunately. Make sure that saved. Okay. So um, I'll see y'all at some point again. Oh, if I look at stream after this, I'm no longer been recording. Okay. Peace out.